across the country this morning in uh, 32 NFL cities, they begin the process of evaluating the preseason games and getting down to their 53-man rosters. Uh, of course, they'll eventually have 10 practice squad members and on game day, uh, which kind of what you're looking at right here, you'll be getting down or they'll be getting down to a 46-man roster. Now, the thing we just want to talk about really briefly today is just how detailed uh, the special teams part of it is and how much it comes into uh, the decision-making process this time of year. And you may have heard where Ron Rivera at the Carolina Panthers actually called a timeout at the end of the game to allow a Chicago Bear kicker to um, attempt a field goal at the end of the game. Uh, because once again, the big thing in the NFL is all of the players are auditioning for 32 different teams. Uh, there are some players that will be locked into a team uh, the stars and the upper echelon guys but um, for the rest of them it's a, a deal where they could be playing for the team uh, that they just scrimmaged against or played a preseason game against uh, they could be on that team in three or four weeks so uh, the special team part of it is such a big deal and uh, if you are the fifth best receiver you better be able to cover uh, on a kickoff or you better be able to be a part of the kickoff return or something like that and uh, a lot of people don't think that's true they think it's just jargon it's not it is a the fifth best receiver may not get chosen for a football team if they can't contribute on special teams the same would go for cornerbacks now if you don't uh, believe that and don't understand the detail that goes in let's just take a look at um, a chart that uh, longtime NFL special teams coordinator Bobby April shared with us last year uh, as we were doing the coach and coordinator podcast with him. And you can see right here the detail that goes in each week uh, as you're getting your 46-man roster ready for that game and who he would have available to actually be a part of special teams. And you can see the, the quarterbacks are not a part of it. I mean, unless you've got them down as a holder and they don't they don't necessarily count the same way the rest of the team does. But with your wide receivers, uh, he's got factored in here that the first two spots, uh, the two, two top receivers, according to the offensive coordinator and receiver coach, he would not use. But underneath that, the third, fourth, and fifth receivers, right, they would be on two core phases or four core phases of special teams. And uh, the fifth, if the fifth receiver dressed, Right, then they would be a, probably a part of everything. Now, offensive line, even, you've got a deal where the top five you would leave alone. And now as you get to six, seven, eight, nine, all right, depending on how many you dress, most of the time there would only be seven offensive linemen dressing. Poss possibility of eight, but they also factor into it. But as you go right down the roster, tight ends, running backs, and fullbacks, linebackers, and safeties, right down the middle right here, these positions right here make or break your special teams. They really do. If you're a tight end in the NFL, you better be a, a great, great Hall of Fame type tight end, or you're going to be on the special teams core too. All right. So, um, just trying to let you look at this. We'll attach Coach April's uh, podcast so you can listen a little bit what he was talking about uh, as he went through it. But just understand that right now, all of these young players that are fighting for a roster spot in the NFL, they understand that getting inside of their special teams playbook and understanding how to find a way to get on as many different phases of special teams is going to be critical, critical to them actually being a part of that 53-man roster when it gets cut down here in a couple weeks.